Professor Jayakuma and Dalita, friends and colleagues. I'm delighted to be here today with all of you to launch Prof Jayakumar's latest book, as usual, provocatively titled, Be at the Table or Be on the Menu. It's a timely book which tells one strand of the story of our journey from third world to first. It's a story told from his personal perspective, the perspective of a key member of the second generation leadership. And it coincides with SG50. Daya was in politics for 31 years. He served in cabinet, he helmed important ministries, and he participated in many major events, policies, and constitutional changes. In home affairs, he led the rescue operation after Hotel New World collapsed. He led the operation when SQ-117 was hijacked. He handled the Marxist conspiracy. He played a major role in all the important constitutional and legislative changes in the last three decades, including non-constituency MPs, group representation constituencies, nominated MPs, the elected president, and the legislation on maintenance of religious harmony. And he played an important role, not just because he was minister for law, but because he was contributing his experience, his perspective, his judgment as a member of the cabinet. In foreign affairs, he saw through our response to key world events like 9-11, President Suharto's fall, and also major engagements by Singapore, such as our term on the UN Security Council. He handled sensitive negotiations with Malaysia, including on water, on Pedra Branca, and on the points of agreement on Malayan Railways land. And as Deputy Prime Minister and later Senior Minister, he coordinated complex multi-ministry policy matters like national security and climate change. But Jaya is more than a former colleague. He's a mentor and an old friend. I first saw him in 1980 during the general election campaign. I went to listen to an election rally and heard the new candidate, Prof Jayakumar, speaking on stage. He didn't know that, but it left an impression on me. When I entered politics four years later in 1984, and I was announced as a PAP candidate, Jaya was one of the two ministers who introduced me to the press. In cabinet over many years, I worked with him closely on many of the issues that he writes about in this book, whether it be legislation or foreign policy or domestic issues. Jaya was often on the front line where things were hottest. We would be co-drafters in chief for the government working on white papers, government statements, letters to the press, sending drafts to each other back and forth, at first by fax, later by email, often late into the night. And we got to know each other very well. And he always provided me with wise counsel, insightful criticism, and tactful advice in our discussions. When I became PM, I asked Jaya to become my DPM. His experience and clarity added ballast and judgment to my cabinet. So when I read his new book, it brought back many old memories and much satisfaction recalling the battles that we had fought together. But I also learned something about him that I never knew before. I knew he rollerbladed, I knew he tried kendo, but I never knew that Jaya was also a talented amateur painter. And if you look at the book, you'll see some samples of his work there. It reminds us that behind the public persona of a public figure, there's often a warm, fun, human side that one does not always see. But Jaya's book is more than a nostalgic personal memoir. It reminds us of the harsh reality of international affairs, especially for a small country with little clout vis-a-vis -vis big players. The title of the book, Be at the Table or Be on the Menu, says it all. 
As a small country, Singapore always has to fight to be at the table. Things have gone well for us for so long that people sometimes do not realize that we can still easily be turfed off the table and become an item on the menu. And this has not happened only because of the quiet and unremitting efforts of Jaya and others like him. People in MFA, in government, or in the private sector but doing public service, people who speak up for Singapore, make friends for us, defend our positions and advance our interests, they make sure that we are at the table, that we have something to say, and that our voice is heard. The book also reminds us of our ideals as a nation, the ideals of meritocracy, multiracialism, and the rule of law, lived out through Jaya's personal story, also weaved into the book. Jaya was born to a poor family in a minority community. His father was an immigrant from India, and he was the fifth of seven children. Through ability and hard work, he made it to university and he became Singapore's perm rep to the UN in his early 30s. He entered cabinet and became a minister holding important portfolios in a multiracial cabinet team, a team which treated one another as friends and equals. And this would not have been possible without a system that upheld meritocracy, multiracialism, and the rule of law. The book gives us an insight into the deep thinking behind a number of government actions, policy decisions, and legislation which Jaya was personally involved in. He shares incidents that reflect his and his colleagues' deep commitment to Singapore. He recounts how one night he was going to bed when he was startled to hear a big bang. It sounded like an explosion, and he wasn't able to go to sleep until he had checked and was assured that no major incident had been reported. Such incessant worries came with a job of the Minister for Home Affairs. How to keep everyone in Singapore safe. And they are shared by quite a number of the other ministers as well. So I hope his book attracts the readership which it deserves and inspires others to step up and to serve Singapore. I'd like to thank Jaya for dedicating this book to the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. He shares with the reader a moving exchange of emails with Mr. Lee after the last general elections, after the last meeting of the cabinet in which both he and Mr. Lee attended before they retired as ministers. Jaya wrote to Mr. Lee to say what a profound impact he had had on him. Because of the way Mr. Lee had approached difficult issues with the national interest uppermost in mind, and that Jaya, he had tried hard to imbue his younger colleagues with the same approach that he had learned from Mr. Lee. And Mr. Lee replied, thanking Jaya and saying that they had fought many a battle together and depended on each other's trust and judgment for over 30 years. We must keep alive this spirit of stewardship this compulsion to pass on our values and our experiences to our successors so that Singapore can grow to, from strength to strength for more generations to come. And this is what Jaya has done. Congratulations, Jaya.